Hello whistlers everywhere. So today what I thought I would talk about is about breathing and where to breathe in a tune. Not always as obvious as we would like it to be. So a little bit about how the tunes are created and a lot of the times tunes are written without woodwind instruments being specific. And what I mean by specific is that a lot of the traditional tunes were either fiddle tunes or pipe tunes or accordion tunes, box tunes, um, not necessarily written for uh, whistle players or flute players or any wind players. So um, one of the problems that we have as whistle players is where do we breathe in a tune and how can we make a tune work that maybe wasn't originally composed on a whistle that maybe doesn't even have obvious places where we can breathe. I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, in today's video and um, hopefully we can uh, have some sort of examples on what we can do to um, make a tune work for us. So going back to the top, um, there are really fundamental rules that we cannot break when we are adding breath and the golden rule is that the breath that we take in cannot alter in any way the overall rhythm of the pulse of the beat in other words if we put what we're playing against a metronome yeah when we take a breath that breath should not interfere with the next bar or the next beat that's fundamental because a lot of the time it's dance tunes that we're playing and we have to keep a rhythm, but rhythm is really important in terms of structure of the piece. And especially if we're playing with other people, yeah, our rhythm has to be uh, as good, or if not better <laughs> than everyone else's rhythm. Um, so a few ideas just to run by you and to give you sort of uh, some helpful hints as to when to breathe and where to breathe. And let's start off by the golden rule being number one, is that the breath cannot interfere with the rhythm. Uh, and sometimes that's easier said than done, because if there are no obvious places to breathe, then we have to create a space by doing something a little bit different maybe than what's written in the music. Um, so I was uh, chatting to a number of different students about breathing within the tunes and sometimes you have to make slight adjustments to the way that you're playing the tune. Um, it could be an adjustment in ornamentation or maybe even leaving an ornament unornamented or rather a note unornamented and maybe shaving just a little fraction off that note and using a longer note say um, as a breathing note or 
maybe thinking of a different ornament which you could replace, which gives you enough time to also grab a quick breath. Um, if there's no such ornament or note where you can change, um, if it's all say running quavers or eighth notes, uh, as are also known as, and there isn't enough time to make a breath, then you have to make a slight adjustment within the tune itself. It may be changing a couple of notes, so rather if there's two eighth notes, maybe just playing the first and using the second note as a breathing note or a breathing gap. It's all about how you make a piece work for you and your own breath capacity. So that's really important to think about how the tune is structured and how you can make the tune work for you. What you don't want to do is to be snatching breaths, uh, say at the end of, um, of a, long a long section of the tune and you've used so much breath uh, in playing that section that you actually have to take a deep breath in. Um, what I like to use is the analogy of a, a glass of water um, or a pint of beer if you like and imagine you're holding a glass of water in your hand and as you're breathing out you're pouring that drink and then when you get to a breathing point you're refilling that quickly and then pouring it again. So what you don't want to do is to pour too much of that liquid out of the glass and then it's going to take much longer to fill it back up for the next breath if you like. So making sure that you are able to snatch those breaths when you need to, which brings us on to another subject is what I, which I call preemptive breathing. So already mentioned, you don't want to exhaust your breath supply to such a degree that you're going to need to take a huge breath and pause the music or pause the rhythm. Um, so what you might want to do is think about the structure of the piece that you're playing, where's a good place to breathe um, and also there might be a time where if you snatch a breath earlier on and basically just reinflate your lung capacity to the maximum then it will get you to another point where your breath doesn't inter interrupt the flow of the piece of music so a preemptive breath or what I have called the preemptive breath is taking an additional breath, even if you absolutely don't need to take one in that place, but it will save you later on from having to take a breath in a place that isn't perhaps gonna work quite so well or isn't convenient to take a breath. So preemptive breathing is a good thing to sort of think about. Uh, and I always like to get my uh, students to learn the piece without any ornaments first, and then look at the structure of the piece and then think about where they're going to breathe within that piece. And I'll do a little demonstration of that in a minute. Um, so breathing and finding a place to breathe, uh, which isn't going to interrupt the flow of the music is absolutely the most important part of learning to breathe and finding a breath within that tune. Um, another a uh, helpful hint is if you can it's better to breathe on a longer note than a shorter note um, just because you've got more time and you can do more things with it so say if you've got a, a quarter note or a crotchet or a dotted quarter note it's better to be able to try and snatch a breath and like I said shave just a little bit of that note value and incorporate a breath into that and you don't have to ornament that note you can play it either straight or you can maybe put just a cut on it uh, and then use the rest of the timing of that note uh, as, as a breathing point. So just to summarize what we've talked about up to now, we've got the hierarchy, if you like, of, of structure. So rhythm is immutable. You cannot change the rhythm and add an extra beat for a breath. Look through the piece and find where the best points are breathing for you. Now that's really important for you is a really important thing because we all have different capacities and we all have different whistles. Some whistles don't use as much air and other whistles maybe use a little more air. 
Low whistles tend to be a bigger bore and you have to push more air through them. So you're not going to be able to play phrases that maybe are so long with uh, big whistles like the low Ds and low Cs and such. Uh, and even sort of high whistles. Um, some high whistles uh, are what we said more air hungry. And you have to um, think about that when you're playing is you can't play as long on certain whistles just because of the, the way the whistle is and the sound of the whistle. And the other thing as well is if you're playing a lot more in the high register, then you're going to need to take more breath because you, you're putting the air through the high register uh, at a quicker rate. So that, that rate means that you're actually breathing quicker and you're going to expend your air capacity a lot quicker than say like if you're playing everything just in the lower register. Um, so there's so many things to think about within the structure of the piece. Um, but a useful exercise is to play through a piece and find where the natural breathing points are for you. So if I'm gonna say take a, a jig like Lark in the morning, what I like to do is to play through it first of all, and then think about where do I need to take a breath? So if I go for the first part, now about there is what I need to take a breath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a note of that. Now, if you have it on paper, you can put a little note on the paper or you can make a mental note of it, whatever way. Um, but your breathing marks may change within the piece, depending on if you're doing a repeat. Uh, the structure of the piece itself. So again, first time around you play the, uh, the, let's say the A part of Lark in the Morning. Second time around you may need to breathe in a different place, which is fine, that's okay. But you need to be able to structure that piece so that whatever note you're landing on, or even before you land on that note, have an idea in here where is going to be a good place to breathe. So I'm going to repeat the A part of Lark in the Morning and I'm going to choose which note I'm going to breathe on. So, so what I did there was um, rather than playing the music exactly is written. I played a long B and then used part of that B, which basically wasn't ornamented to take a breath. And sometimes you're going to have to do that. If the piece doesn't have any breathing spaces uh, written into it, then you have to create one. Um, now, some classical music pieces or certainly Baroque pieces um, like, um, things that are played on the flute. Um, there's a bark piece, the, um, um, the, there's a flute piece uh, written for, uh, oh, it was quite a while ago um, that I played through it. Um, but it was, I think it was one of the partitas, um, one of the flute partitas. Um, and there are absolutely no breathing marks. There, there are no uh, phrase marks at all and it's all running semiquavers or 16th notes um when i first looked at it i thought there's no way i'm going to be able to play that without doing some kind of magic to <laughs> to the actual piece or um and then I, when i listened to how other people played it they played it in a much more i suppose the word is rubato which means it's not quite bang on in rhythm and the piece had a flow to it and they would use certain key notes, which they would pause on, take a breath, and then sort of re restart the piece uh, from the next bar or from the next note. Um, and that way the piece wasn't in strict rhythm, but it worked beautifully because uh, it had sort of like a, a, a human kind of phrasing with the breath. And that's really important to think about in terms of your playing is to incorporate the breathing into the rhythm of, of, of the piece. Um, so it's a kind of organic process of, of breathing and notes 
and rhythm. So when we're playing all together, um, it all comes together as one thing. So the breathing isn't separate from the music. It's part of the music and it's important to get that sort of concept of breathing being integral to the actual piece that you're playing. So if I'm going to play again, Lark in the Morning, now I'm not going to play um, it exactly as written, um, but what I do is alter the tune, like I said, to fit in where I need to breathe. Um, I'll play it through anyway. Uh, If you noticed where I was breathing and how I was breathing, sometimes what I would do is snatch a quick breath in a relevant place within the music, but other times I was making breathing spaces by making slight alterations to the actual written tune, um, which is absolutely fine to do. As long as you're keeping the basic flow going and you're not changing anything too drastically in terms of missing out whole chunks to get a great big breath in. Uh, it's all about, as I said as before, uh, I've used the analogy of the glass. Yeah, it's all about making sure you top up in advance so that you don't have to stop and take a huge breath. Uh, so a piece like that, um, what I would do is I'd go through it and think, oh, okay, where am I going to breathe? How am I going to make this tune work for me? And if you need to breathe more, if you're using a particularly air hungry whistle or a bigger whistle like a low D or a low C and you still want to play the same tune, you may have to make alterations in the way that you play on your high whistle in terms of you may have to breathe more uh, or more frequently. In which case you might have to leave a certain note unornamented or create a longer note uh, instead of this being three eighth notes or three quavers, you might have to play one note as a, as, as a quarter note or a crotchet and then uh, take a breath and shave a little bit of the um, note value from the longer note in, in order to get a breath to get you through to the next breathing part. Um, so in short, you have to make the piece fit your anatomy and your ability to breathe and your whistle and there's nothing wrong with that but as i said before the most critical thing is not to breathe uh in a place which is going to affect the overall rhythm and pulse of what you're playing so if you've got any questions about breathing or if you feel you need to ask something it doesn't have to be about breathing about anything to do with whistle playing i would be most happy for you to uh, either send your questions uh, or write your questions on on, uh, on the comments below or you can email me at uh, ben at benwalker.org. Uh, I'm happy to answer any kind of questions that come up uh, to do with whistling. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and uh, if you find what's useful uh, in these videos. Um, if it's helpful at all, if you could possibly uh, give me a like and possibly subscribe. Okay, thanks a lot and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.